Hi, welcome to Mean Centering and Continuous Covariate, and you'll find out whether or not doing this is magic. Are you ready for this? Are you a master of simple linear regression? If I say OLS, do you immediately say, oh, she's talking about blah, blah, blah. And uh, I know what the OLS mean. And you know how to interpret the parameters of a regression, which was the last one. If not, go back and visit simple linear regression if you can't answer the first question and simple linear regression parameter interpretation if you can't answer the second one. And especially the second one is important for understanding this lecture. <clears throat> Excuse me. There's a little bit of R code for this. Uh, you can either go to this tiny URL, Mumford Brain Stats, or I will link to the R script in the info box and you can regenerate the data that are used in this example and uh, run the models for comparison and tinker around with it if you'd like. So if review from last time, we ran this regression model where we were modeling reaction time as a function of age. So we have reaction time equals beta naught plus beta one times age. And remember beta naught was the intercept and beta one was the slope. So one general observation for just any regression of the form y equals beta naught plus beta one x is that the intercept beta naught is simply the value of y when x is zero, no matter what x is. So what I'm going to do in order to understand mean centering is I'm going to compare these two regressions. So the top is the one that we have seen before. We're just modeling reaction time as a function of beta naught plus beta one times age. The second one's identical. I'm using gammas instead of betas because the model is parameterized differently because I'm using demeaned age instead of age. So our goal is to compare beta naught to gamma naught and beta one to gamma one. And if you're wondering what demeaned age is, it's simply taking age minus the mean of age. So for each subject, you would replace their age with the value of their age minus the mean of age. Okay, starting with the comparison of beta naught and gamma naught, as we know from last time, beta naught is simply the reaction time when age is zero. We knew that. Gamma naught is the reaction time when the demeaned age or age minus the mean of age is zero, but that's just the reaction time when age is equal to the mean of age. That, my friends, is just the mean reaction time. So to recap, in a simple linear regression, if you mean center your um, regressor, in this case age, the interpretation of your intercept is now the mean of your dependent variable. So gamma naught here is the mean of reaction time because I have mean centered age. So conclusion, beta naught, gamma naught are not the same. How about beta one and gamma one? They are the same because this is simply a slope. Um, and remember a slope is a rate of change, how reaction time changes for a change in age. And a change in age is the same as a change in mean centered age. A one year difference in mean centered age is the same as a one year difference in age. So here's just a little quick example. I've listed out six ages here if I mean center I get the six values below. So I just took the mean of those values and subtracted. Apparently the mean was 10. So you can see um, these first two subjects are a year apart in age, a 10 year old and an 11 year old, and their mean centered ages are also one year apart. Likewise, the second subject and third subject are three years apart in age and also mean centered age. So nothing uh, amazing there. So the slope remains the same. Beta one, gamma one will be exactly the same. Ultimately what's happening is this y-axis is moving. So in the original regression, again modeling, see age is on the x-axis, the line is going to cross the y-axis when age is zero. So it's way out here. And again, this is the same data as last time. If I mean center age, I'm simply scooting the y-axis over so that it's centered at the mean age. So this is, I'm now just going to redo this, but with age minus the mean of age, so mean centered age in years, and now you can see it's centered at zero because it's uh, mean centered age. 
Okay, so if you think about what the data are plotting and think about the equation just being a line, the interpretation is pretty straightforward. So why do this? Because you can kill two birds with one stone. As we saw with the simple linear regression, the top model or the model we looked at last time, the intercept was meaningless, the reaction time for a zero-year-old. Um, this way, your intercept has meaning and your slope has meaning, so that's great. Um, quickly, I'll run through the R code. I'm using RStudio these days. Um, you know, it has some functionalities I really like, and regular R kept crashing when I updated my computer. So the set seed line is important. This will ensure that you get the same data I had. I don't know why I plot a histogram of the reaction times, but there they are. You can plot the data. This mar thing, par mar, this is just changing the margins so that my, um, this, I changed the font size here so it fits. So this is just the plot we saw earlier. And all I'm doing, if you're using a Mac, uh, which I am, if you just highlight the code you want to run and hit command in return, it will enter the code down here. So here I'm running the regression. You use the lm command. Um, rt is the dependent variable, age is the uh, um, independent variable, and R will automatically put an intercept in a model. Most statistics software automatically throws an intercept in the model. And then um, summary gives you the summary of the model. So this is what we saw before. I had a snapshot of the summary last time. So the slope, sorry, the intercept is 0.69. So that means the um, predicted reaction time for a zero-year-old is 0 0.69. And then the for a one-year change in age, there's a 0 0.00. 7919 increase in reaction time. Uh, just so you know, you can add uh, the linear regression fitted line by replotting the data, and then you can use this AB line command with the model. And there it is. So you can see on the right, there's our plot. Uh, moving down here, um, just stretching things out using it's over here. I changed the x limit. Uh, so zero is included, um, so we can see the y uh, axis. So I'm just adding it with this AB line command, and I'm also adding a vertical line at the mean age. So that's this plot. So this AB line command here was adding the red line, which is the regression fit. V equals zero, stands for a vertical line at zero. That's the gray line. And then V equals mean of age is putting a vertical line at the mean of age. Made it black, change it to a line width of two. Now I'm rerunning the regression using mean centered age. So all I did was I took age minus the mean of age and I reran that regression. <clears throat> and this is the plot I just showed. It's the same plot as before, but I'm using mean centered age. So you can see here, the Y axis is now centered at zero. Now, the last part, I wanted you to compare the two model fits, and that is all this is doing, so I'm going to run that. And I think we're at the end. Let me scroll up. Okay, we can see the important parts here. So this is the original model. Uh, this is the one with age demean, so you can see age dot demean. Um, yeah, if you're a MATLAB user, this .dm thing might be confusing you. It's not used the same way as in MATLAB. It's not a structure. Uh, structures are called lists in R, and you pull out the pieces using a dollar sign. Anyway, it's just a, just a variable name. So comparing these two, you can see the only difference between the two is the, I mean, the, um, the age is exactly the same, right, because that's the slope but the intercept will be different and the inferences will be different as well. But the multiple R squared, which is the Pearson correlation squared, is the same. The model fit is no better, it's no worse, it's exactly the same between these two models. All we've done is we changed the interpretation of the intercept, <clears throat> pardon me. And the last thing I had there, hopefully to convince you, if you weren't already, that if you look at the mean reaction time, it's 1.013, which was our parameter estimate 
in our model with HD means. So see down here at the bottom, the mean reaction time 1.013, go up to the model fit, the parameter estimate is 1.013. So that's exactly what it'll be every time. Okay. All you need to know, uh, make sure you know uh, what does mean centering do to the parameter associated with the regressor that was centered. Um, in this case, it was the slope for age. So how, was, how did mean centering age impact the slope for age? And does the model fit any better after mean centering? And last and most importantly, what actually did change in our model when we mean centered our parameter? That's it. Um, I'm probably not going to cover this again in multiple linear regression. Um, importantly, in multiple linear regression, your intercept will only be the mean, whatever, reaction time or whatever your dependent variable if every regressor in your model is mean-centered. So even if you have an indicator variable that zeros and ones, you have to mean-center that and then that might make you feel a little weird. Um, but we'll get there. We'll get there when we talk about ANOVAs um, and things like that. Leave any questions or comments in the comments section <laughs> or on YouTube, or you can join the Facebook group and leave comments and questions there. The link to the Facebook group, Mumford Brain Stats, is in the info box. All right, continue on. Have a wonderful day.